This is Cal Sajad for the Boxing Shorts. We have Richard Towers here. Richard, how are you doing? Nice to meet you, pal. Yeah, you good? Yeah, really good, thank you. So, the heavyweight division in Britain, thriving at the moment. What did you make of Joshua and Dillian White at the weekend? I thought it were a good fight. I thought it were a very entertaining fight. Uh, no disrespect to Anthony or, or Dillian. I thought they both could have you know, boxed better. Uh, I'm sure they think the same thing, but um, Dillian got in there and gave a really good account of himself. Joshua got in there and gave a really good account of himself. But I think um, a few questions were uh, left left open about Joshua. Um, like I say, you know, Dillian was never, ever to be looked past. He's dangerous. I've sparred with him. I've sparred a lot with Joshua as well. And I know that, you know, every time Dillian comes to, to train, every time he comes to spar, every time he comes to fight, he brings it to the table. And I, know, I also know the same thing about uh, Joshua. My point is, is Joshua's boxed at a, a, a higher, what could be considered a significant level than um, Dillian. But I knew... Dillian's getting in there, he's getting in hungry and he's getting in bloodthirsty and I think that kind of shocked everybody you know, um, that that uh, somebody could get in with Joshua uh, with with his momentum the momentum is built over time against the opponent, he's built his momentum uh, I think everybody, everybody was surprised how Dillian came through the first, second, third right up to the sixth round was it um, and like I say, it was a really entertaining fight. I think uh, there could have been improvements on both sides, but I'm nobody to throw stones. You know, I've got I've got a lot of a lot of things to learn myself in the game. So um, I'm just looking at these guys, and I'm thinking it, it, it leaves the opportunity open for me as well. You know, because we're all human beings. We've got two weapons to u- utilize in there, um, amongst many other things. But um, it, it just it just brings the possibility a bit more to earth, a little bit more. What question marks over Joshua did you, uh, were you asking yourself after that? You know, he can be hit, he can be wobbled, uh, he, he, he can be outboxed. Um, you know, it's, it's like I say, he's built a good momentum over time. And it's been interesting watching, watching Joshua. It's been interesting seeing his progress. And, you know, hats off to the fella. He's, he's got in there and he's answered every question that's, that's to be answered. He got in against Dillian and Dillian left a few... Um, a few unanswered questions, so I, I, you know I'm, I'm looking forward to, to, to showcasing what I've been learning. And like I say, you know I underestimate nobody. Uh, I'm sure many people underestimate me, but we all make mistakes, and we've all got plenty to learn. And, and I, I'm just getting started. So you're out in February next. Mm-hmm. Um, any idea of an opponent yet? Uh, no, not not yet. Uh, I've, it's left in Adam's hands. You know we're just uh, we've been chipping away at the block for a while. Um, getting some good sparring. I've just been recently sparring with Vladimir Klitschko, uh, who got a, a loss to Tyson Fury. Um, so, I, uh, yeah, I've been getting some good preparation yeah, and plenty more to come. What did you make of Fury Klitschko? Did it go how you thought it would? Um, to be honest with you, uh, I know Tyson's elusive. You know, I can say it now because it's it's past the, you know, I can be wise after the event. That's, I suppose that's the same. Um, when I went to spar with uh, Klitschko, um, um, I, he, he couldn't hit me, you know. He, he didn't hit me once in in four times sparring. I was doing four rounds a day, and he'd never caught me once. Um, they they put me to the side, you know. So I was just spectating for the for the second week. Uh, I was getting paid to spectate, so I wasn't complaining. But uh, I'd have liked to go there, you know, time away from the kids. I'd have liked to get in there and and keep practicing what I was doing. Uh, but lo and behold, it probably was the best best preparation. But you know, even a champion at that level can become complacent. And I truly believe, you know, not taking anything away from Tyson. I like Tyson. I respect Tyson as a fighter, as a human being. You know, there's been a few disrespectful remarks uh, from his uncle, especially. Uh, but that's another another subject. Uh, with regards to Tyson, Tyson just gets in there, does his job. Um, but like I say, you know, uh, they, uh, when I sparred with Klitschko, they put me to one side because uh, it wasn't going his way in the spars. I was catching him, um, doing a quite a neat job. Uh, so they put me to the side, you know, to avoid, you know, trouble and things, whatever, whatever the reason was. And I never, I never uh, finished the sparring. But uh, lo and behold, like I say, uh, that could have been the best preparation. So Tyson, you owe me, man. <laughs> Oh, uh, where, where do you see your career going? The likes of Joshua, perhaps Dillian White, and then eventually Tyson Fury for the world title. Yeah, well, you, who knows? You know, if I, if I knock people out, 
if I knock people out, which I can do, you know, I, I can close my eyes and knock people out. You might as well say that's what I've done because I'm not smart enough to be the the most uh, tactical technician. Uh, I'm not I'm not experienced enough to be um, um, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard's of this of this era. But you know, you can guarantee that I'm get, if I get in a ring, I'm getting into fight. Um, the loss that I had, that was my by far worst ever performance, mentally, physically, in every wheel. You know, um, I got in there and I wasn't myself for, 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 for different reasons. But like I say, I don't like to take things away from people. Uh, Lucas Brown got in there and he was a better man and he got rid of me. You know, if I could have got rid of him in, in a similar type of fashion, I would have done. So hats off to the guy. Um, but like I say, if, if, if I catch anybody on the chin, I can close my eyes and throw a punch. And if I catch them, I'm quite confident that they're going to go. So, you know, it's, I've just got to do my, get in there, do my job, and it will speak for itself. I'll get my opportunity. So, Lucas Brown has been calling out uh, Fury, calling mm -hmm. out Wilder. How about a rematch with him? Would that interest you? Oh, well, I've, I, me and Adam have spoke about this. I'd, I'd love to. I, I want to fight anybody. I've always been the same. I remember when um, when Dominic Ingle he approached Brendan to ask me because me and Brendan were um, we were always closely associated, as you know, uh, we're close friends, associates. That's a that's an understatement. Um, um, and he, he got Brendan to ask me, would I like to fight a fella called Lucas Brown? I'd already seen Lucas Brown because he'd just signed with uh, Ricky Hatton. So I said, I want, I want to fight anybody, Brendan. And um, Brendan was, he, he sort of like chuckled to himself. He said, y y y your game is a bad round. I goes, you know, Bren, I'm, I'm here to do this. I want to get to the highest level I can possibly get in anything that I try to do. You know, if I was... Um, if I was doing anything, you know, I'd put my all into it. I made a choice, and my choice was to get in and fight. You know, I'm ne I was never even interested in boxing before I got involved with boxing. I was more interested in the other side of the fence. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, and you know, shame, shameful to say, but um, if if I could, if I look back and I think to myself, shoulda, woulda, coulda, then you know, I'd sit and I'd think, oh, I, I could have achieved this, could have achieved that. But the time is now, and I'm interested in it now, and I want to fight now. So anything that I've gone through, anything that I've thought in the past, it doesn't really matter. If I get in there and knock people out, um, I'm going to get my chance, and I'm going to get, I'm going to get the opportunity to provide for my family. That's that's the ultimate goal. You touch on it there a little bit. Your time in prison. How did that prepare you for the boxing world? Oh well, there's 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 nothing like uh, a preparation. Uh, with prison with regards to any avenue you take if you take the avenue of whatever whatever uh, profession you decide to go into it prepares you in any way possible because I'm, I'm dealing with the, the the most cold human beings I'm dealing with the nicest human beings I'm dealing with a wide variety of different people so it prepares you for for everything in life you know so I, I never look at situations now when it's probably because of prison and think, oh, I can't do that. I think, you know, I got through seven years of my life, um, you know, and you, I put myself in that position. But um, I was, I was, uh, I was left with not being able to um, do the things that normal people can do. And and it shows you, if you, you can apply yourself, then uh, things will, things good will come.